Hello, family. Who is ready for a drink? Yeah. Okay, okay. I think that means I'll have to keep it short. No? No? So it feels just like yesterday that I was up here for the opening keynote. Is that true? Oh, it was yesterday. But actually, the conversations, the meetings, the content on the panels, everything I've been learning, it's like a year of like things. So thank you, everyone, for that. What an exceptional experience. I want to start, before I like get in this, just with a massive thank you. This wouldn't have been, I'm getting some feedback. Um, this wouldn't have been possible without our amazing events team. I mean, the venue, like, yeah, give it up for them. The food, I mean, have you ever been at a conference with like delicious food like this? I mean, I haven't been, maybe I'm going to the wrong conferences, but that was exceptional. Um, even just the music walking up right now, you know, yeah. Um, I also think this is really like has been a very kind of, you know, an experience of co-creation from, from the, the things happening at the venue. I was up there this morning and going kind of through the NFT lounge and immersing myself in the forest all the way to just the, the stands out here to everything that's been happening like the days leading up to today or yesterday and then continuing into this week with Barcelona Blockchain Week. I mean, it's just a, just a fantastic, um, yeah, I think evidence that this community can come together and co-create just the most amazing experiences. So thanks everyone. I know this is like a massive team, uh, team effort. And yeah, I just, I mean, I'm already like sad that this is like coming to an end today. And um, I'm thinking maybe we should do one next month, you know, just this is so much fun. <laughs> Sorry, Sandra, it's not, it's not, not real. <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. I, I've just been really blown away. I mean, I'm, this is like this mixture of feelings, happiness, um, just, oh, wow, you have photos up here? Wow, look at that, amazing. Um, it's just incredible. I mean, if after these two days, someone is not bullish on the seller community, I mean, I really don't know why. It's, it's unbelievable. And I want to I wanna actually start by telling a little story. So as many of you know, or some of you know, or maybe a few of you know, <laughs> I grew up in East Germany. And uh, there's this like very vivid memory of uh, one time, one of my, and this was, I was like a young boy, uh, one, of my one of my dad's friends uh, who had moved with his family to the West uh, right before the war was built, came to visit us and this is like in the late 80s, and uh, he, gave me, he gave me a coin. He gave me a, you know, Western mark. And, you know, I, I made some, you know, I was gonna like do this without cards, but <laughs> and I was just spending time out there mixing and mingling and talking, so now I have to like uh, make sure I hit all my points here. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, he, so he, he gave me this coin. And uh, it's interesting because to me, like, in a, in a way, this didn't have much monetary value, but I, I, I cherished it. I had it on my desk. I looked at it. And what I realized now is that this coin was kind of like a ticket to a better world. Um, I, you know, at the time, there was, there was no evidence. There was no signs that I would ever even be able to go and visit the West. And so it wasn't really that I, you know, could do much with this coin. Uh, but it was very special to me. Well, in fact, there was, there was one place where I could take the coin, which was there was a small kind of store in, in, in Berlin, in East Berlin, which accepted uh, Western and foreign currency called Intershop. And actually, a note on Intershop, this is interesting. Um, there's some nice analogies there. So when you go to Intershop, and th these were stores that were started in the 70s, mostly for visitors coming to the East from the West that you know, wanted like Western products. And so uh, then they opened it up, you know, East Germans could then also hold foreign currency. And so you actually take that coin there and buy like a Western product. This is one of the many examples of unintended consequences where as more and more Easterners kind of started shopping at these stores with currency brought in, like, you know, my 
um, my dad's friends, um, they realized, well, we're like, there's all these cool products and we don't get them in our stores. And so eventually that, you know, was certainly a, a part in the demonstrations and protests that led to the, the fall of the Berlin Wall. So, yeah, when I, when I, when I think back to that story now, that coin has like a kind of like a very different meaning to me now. And I, I remember another moment that someone gave me a coin. In this case, it wasn't like a physical coin, but it was when someone gave me my first Bitcoin. It was Brian Armstrong. We were at Outside Lens. This is like 2013. He had just started Coinbase. No one cared about Coinbase then, really. Um, I think Chris Dixon had just invested <laughs> um, and people started caring then. But he was just telling everyone about it and he was literally handing out uh, Bitcoin to people. And, you know, realizing now that this was, again, like that coin that, you know, my dad's friend had given me back in the late 80s, this was a ticket to an entirely new world. And now I'm a bad example, but I think about all of us here in this room who've probably onboarded or I think as on the earlier panel, um, someone said, uh, welcomed people into the space. And, you know, this is really, I think, maybe in the moment, like, we don't realize it, but we're giving people tickets to, to a better world, to really a, a completely new financial system, a regenerative financial system of new, uh, of new opportunities. And so, to me, like, comparing those two stories, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that because, you know, we often do that, we tell a friend about it, and we may not realize the impact that we're having on their lives, and I think we should really celebrate uh, these moments. And, you know, I think, yeah, one thing I, you know, this is like, the line for the tweet is, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, you know, like that coin that, you know, my, my dad's friend gave me, this, um, you know, basically this coin was, um, you know, a ticket to, to a better world. Anyway, tweet that if you want. Or don't. It was not that good, actually. <laughs> now that I read it. All right. All right. Moving on. So, I mean, but why? Like, what is what is this better world, right? And I think we had so much evidence these last two days, right? There's all of you here building, like, you know, basically giving us like a full basket of reasons why this world is so desirable. Um, you know, we had like hearing from people about making uh, onboarding into the space more seamless, breaking down barriers of sending money across borders, right? No more $20 wire fees and waiting for the bank to open, you know, like on Monday when it's the weekend. Um, you know, taking power away from the big social media networks, right, that end up monetizing our data. 20% um, marketplace fees, like we don't like them. Uh, or being an early driver for, you know, something like Uber and not really seeing any rewards, um, despite being so critical to Uber taking off in the first place. Not being able to get a loan as a farmer, um, and you know, not having the ability, for example, to change to sustainable farming practices. Being a creator, not getting paid, paid, uh, uh, paid fairly. The list goes on, right? And I think over the last two days, we've just heard like 100 reasons probably why this world can be more desirable if we build it in a, in a responsible way. I'm not sure, um, maybe raise of hands, how many folks here have read uh, Kim Stanley Robinson's book, uh, Ministry of the Future? Yeah, some? All right, if you haven't, like, it's a, it's a big book, but it's, it's worth a read. Um, so uh, without giving sort of everything away, it's sort of, it's set in a, near kind of future where there's this, you know, kind of made up UN agency that's supposed to, you know, fix the world. And what's interesting is that, and this is like, he wrote this in 2019, this was released in 2020, he talks about this kind of big idea of a carbon coin that's backed by the world's central banks. And um, actually, you know, reading the book makes you both um, makes sort of the whole 
you know, effect that climate change will have uh, less abstract, but also gives some hope. You know, I think you, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mix of science fiction and actually taking some of the research that's happening um, and then just showcasing what might be possible to actually address uh, the challenges we're facing. Um, and yeah, when I, uh, when I read this, um, it was already, you know, we were already kind of um, seeing people in this space actually starting to work on this. And now I'm like, wow, like what's already happening just even a year, two years later, it's gonna, it's gonna be so much bigger and better, it's much more powerful, right? We're not just, you know, having central banks come together and create a carbon coin, but we're, we're seeing an entirely new financial uh, system being created, a regenerative financial system that is, uh, on, you know, built on the back of natural assets and has like features that, you know, have much more far-reaching uh, impact. And so, to me, I think, it's, it's interesting because often we underestimate what we can achieve as humans and then within a much shorter amount of time, like, you know, magical things are, are possible. And so, uh, if you haven't read the book, highly recommend it, but also, you know, it's really, um, yeah, it's just a testament again to this community of, you know, we're really at the forefront of building this, this, new, uh, this new financial system. And, um, you know, even a few years ago, you know, this wasn't something that people were, were really thinking about. All right. So, you all here in this room have been working towards the system. I wanted to give just a few highlights that, you know, as I was, you know, walking around and like sitting in on talks, um, really, you know, resonated with me and also like help us remember some of the amazing launches uh, we've seen. So, I mean, first off, I think talking to many of you, uh, Fiat Connect and the Connect the World program are just going to be so awesome for this ecosystem. They're really going to make it possible, uh, you know, anywhere in the world, whether you're using mobile money or, or however you want to onboard into this ecosystem to make that much more seamless. And I'm just so excited about this to go live and all the people that are working on this, all the partners. So amazing job. Thank you. Today, Toucan announced that they are moving to Celo and bringing their awesome technology of uh, bringing, uh, bringing voluntary carbon credits on chain, but also the whole ecosystem around, around that, uh, you know, and to me, this is like just, you know, so amazing to see, not just kind of having these primitives now established, but already seeing the next generation of people, uh, you know, of, of, um, of protocols, of products, that are being tied into that and people thinking about really interesting ways to, to leverage these primitives. And I think when we're uh, together at the next Cello Connect, um, we'll, um, we'll likely be surprised by how much is happening along that front. So welcome, Toucan, to Cello. I think you've already probably felt like you're part of the community, but officially welcome. All right, the next ones we're gonna do just like staccato style. Prime DAO, amazing to have Prime DAO on Cello. Uh, Plumo, holy shit, like that's, I've, I've seen some tweets where people are like, you know, I was doubtful that this whole mobile first thing like made sense, but now I've seen Plumo and it's blown my mind. So yeah, just a massive shout out to the team on that. Um, Salo scan, I'm gonna like, you know, come back to that. That, that, was, a, that was a highlight. <laughs> um, the world is going increasingly uh, multi-chain and you know, yesterday, Wormhole Layer Zero announced that they're supporting Celo. That's a really big deal in just connecting more ecosystems. So we're excited about that. Ledger Live. Um, I also like, I mean, Plastics. Uh, I really love what they're doing. So quick shout out to them. All right. Man, the list goes on and I know you guys are thirsty. So um, I'm gonna stop here. I, I will say one thing, I, you know, even if I didn't mention you, I think the power really, and this has been, this has been so obvious, is of having all these different building blocks come together and be available. I think that's really what makes the magic. And so uh, really keep building. This is awesome. I think so much good stuff will come out of that beyond the direct thing you're solving because you're building it in an open way and you're creating the opportunity for others 
to build their, their dream ventures. Thank you. And so, yes, we're builders, but we're also citizens. We're stewards, we're activists, right? So I think really, let's remind ourselves of the power that we have in uh, telling our story, in, in bringing other people into the space. <laughs> and I think this is obvious, but Salo is not me. Um, Cello is you, Cello is us, really. This is, we're building Cello, and you know, honestly, looking around this room, um, I don't know, I couldn't be more excited to build Cello with you all. <laughs> all right, now let's get back to building, let's go out in the world, let's share the stories, uh, let's keep telling our stories, let's keep coming together as a community. I can't wait for the next Cello Connect. Uh, but there's also a Coneco every month. Come join for that. Come join us at a hackathon. Come join us at another conference. Uh, really, this is, um, I think, seeing what, what was possible even just in these few days by having this connectedness, by coming together uh, in physical space is so powerful, and I really want us to cherish that. And um, with that big shout-out, we'll head over to the, to the Happy Hour, sponsored by the uh, Cello Talent Collective, and I'm excited to have drinks with you all. And with that, I'll just say, here's to an incredible year ahead, and thanks again, everyone, for coming from all corners of the world to make this event happen. And let's go, Cello! Thank you.